This is Framework Leadership. I'm Ken Engel, and you're listening to Framework Leadership, a podcast about how to bring your personal life and organization to the next level. Today, I'm sitting down with Dr. Chris Owen. Chris has served as the Executive Vice President of Southeastern University since 2017. Prior to that, he spent seven years as the VP of Student Development. Uh, It's a pleasure to welcome my good friend and colleague to Framework Leadership, Chris. Welcome. Uh, It's good to be with you, Dr. Engel. You know, throughout the past couple of weeks, uh, we have had to make uh, some tough decisions related to uh, COVID-19, related to this pandemic. This virus has uh, absolutely exploded, continues to dominate the media coverage. I mean, we are literally... Uh, you know, it's uh, almost an hour by hour, uh, you know, as we we see what's happening. So this week, I want to talk about what we're doing as a university, as well as some maybe leadership principles that are in, imperative in, in in a time of crisis like like we're facing. So I'd like to jump right in. Um, let's let's start by talking about our process here at, at Southeastern. Start us out. Can you walk us through how we approach a large scale crisis like we're facing? Yeah, I, I would say starting from the leadership uh, position on this, you can't wait till a crisis to have a process. So it's one thing you see framework leadership. We live and breathe it every day. So our response is based around any tragedy with our CERT team, Southeastern Emergency Response Team. But they function by the same principles we work off almost on a weekly basis. When something comes on our radar, whether it's it's COVID nineteen or it's a hurricane that's coming because we're you know in Central Florida, uh, clarifying uh, the issue is the very first thing we do. It's a, it's a posture of listening. So for us, when we saw this come on the radar, we immediately convened all of the key players uh, around the table. And so when you look at our, our emergency response team, that, that's food management, that's student development, that's academics, that is marketing from a communication standpoint, our communications office is in there. So it's important to have the right people around the table. But the first thing we do is facts, uh, facts. Gather the facts. What do we know at this time? And with COVID-19, as you, you said earlier, it's a, it's a day by day, right, almost right. an hour by exactly. hour. Exactly. And so you have to have a system of communication around the, the, the group that you have. So for us, having the right people around the table and having a communications flow is the beginning of that with the emergency response team. Yeah. Now, now we decided, and I think it was absolutely the right decision um, uh, to to move forward with what I would call uh, a soft closing of the university, and, and adopt we adopted a remote learning uh, delivery model, meaning that students will be continuing their education in a in a online platform, if you will. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that and how we came to that decision uh, to to make it a, you know, we didn't uh, make it mandatory that every student uh, had to leave. It was, it was a choice yep. in this process. Tell us why we did that. Well, I, I think that's a reflection of, of your leadership and, and the mission of this school. We have uh, a, an abundance of caution that we want our students' safety to be a priority, but it's also an excessive amount of of grace and kindness or compassion, you would say. Absolutely. So this caution and compassion on both sides was what informed that. We've got students, they have nowhere to go. Right. And we we experienced this with the hurricane. If we were to shut down completely, we're in essence telling a large group of students, you're homeless, you figure it out. That is anti to the mission of this university. Absolutely. So for us, it was about students first, what's in their best interest. And that's not always as simple as you know. I mean, you're fielding questions on Fox News and other places uh, on, on how you handled that. And so it's not always the cleanest process, but when you hold to your convictions that it's Christ-centered, student-focused, and this is a learning community, then it makes those, those decisions much easier. Yeah, absolutely. What what advice would you give uh, to leaders who, I mean, this is a crisis for everyone, it, you know, so what would you give uh, advice-wise to leaders who are trying to guide their organizations through a major crisis? Yeah, I, I would say first and foremost, uh, stay calm. I think some of the greatest moments when you're watching the news unfold and it seems to only get worse, every ticker tape that comes by is another level of this crisis elevating and then you sit down with a leader that I've experienced and, and sits at the end of the table and says, listen, before we talk, we're not only going to pray. I want to give you a word 
about what the Bible says about courage right. and about peace that he can give you. And I think the very first thing that a leader has to do is has, has to model uh, a sense of peace, strength, and, and conviction in the moment of crisis. So I, I just think for a leader, start with yourself, Make sure that you are leading from a posture that you want replicated in your organization. You roll into a meeting and you're frantic and you're, you're worried and you're up. You, what you do in moderation, your team will do in excess. So, yeah. How, how do you maintain uh, that peace as a leader? Peace is, is so important. And, and the scripture talks about that quite a bit when it comes to uh, challenges when it comes to worrying about issues and 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 scripture talks about it's it's peace yeah so how, how do you how do you do that well psalm 21 uh, 27 1 says uh, the lord is my light and my uh and my salvation whom shall i fear and so i think anytime you are faced with a crisis the way you cultivate peace is you you don't run from your problem but you run to your source right you have to be grounded as a leader daily and I think uh, even more so in moments of crisis, that's where fasting and extended times of prayer come in. You have to be grounded in Christ. We say this here all the time, you know this, you can't give away what you don't have. Right. So you can't fake that when you walk into a room. But if you've been with the Lord and you bring that into a room, man, scripture is the greatest way to transform not only your mind, but your vision of how you see a problem. Yeah, and, and as faith, faith is is what is going to get us through this process and Absolutely. this crisis. Um, there's no doubt about it, and I know that we've made it a, a key component to uh, for our entire community as we go through this and walk through this together. A spiritual formation component. Um, Talk a little bit about what we've decided to yeah. do with that and yeah. how we're doing that. Well, that, that was actually your idea. Uh, you, you walked in and, and, and were leading the meeting very much like I've described and said, hey, I want to know what are we doing on the devotional side? And this idea of a digital devotion from multiple people, you know, we have a multiple, multiple campus pastors, but I think they've even extended it out to a lot of our pastoral, our extension sites. And so we are offering on a daily basis this digital uh, devotional that is all around uh, finding peace and courage and navigating the storm. And so I think uh, it's a great model for our students. Here's your daily discipline of how to connect with God in moments of crisis. Yeah. You know, uh, as leaders, sometimes in, in, in times of, of crisis, we can focus on just surviving. Um, but how can leaders avoid that tunnel vision? And you've got to keep the bigger picture uh, in, in mind while leading through a, a crisis. How, how do we do that? Yeah. So, you, you know, we've seen, uh, we won't mention them, but we've seen some other institutions kind of like us. They made a very quick, very drastic decision and now they're having to go back and unwind things because they didn't listen. They didn't audit the context. They didn't, right. To me, from an outsider standpoint, they didn't have a process for adequately surveying the landscape. And so when we look at that, you, you've got to be able uh, to, to understand where you are. But our mindset is never a survive. Our mindset is survive in advance. Right. Right? This, this idea of innovation and survival. There are moments of crisis that, that force you out of your normal rhythm. And if all you see is a problem and an inconvenience, then all you're gonna hear are, is complaining and excuses. Right. But when you approach that with the mindset, every crisis has an opportunity. There's a moment for you to excel. Now you're looking at innovation. And I think we're seeing that here with our traditional faculty. They didn't just engage in this remote learning process that we talked about they're now creating beyond it. And, and we're hearing things from our enrollment about virtual tours now. No one is going, hey, let's just circle the wagons. Let's just hunker down and wait for this to be, be over. Students' educational journeys is at risk. And so every area is both following CDC guidelines, following our emergency protocol, and changing the way we deliver, serve, and love our learning community. Yeah. And and you just said it, uh, crisis is opportunity, and and it sounds kind of crazy, but actually, crisis are great great uh, moments in in an organization's future. Yes, because you have the way to pave a, a brand new growth curve or a brand new way to uh, do something new and fresh, and and 
And you can't do that without a framing process. And that's why we have been so careful to, to walk through those four framing uh, uh, steps that we, you know, to listen, to audit the context, to, to clarify, and, and, and then to align vision. But I want to go, go to the clarify uh, uh, phase. Clarity is critical. Yeah. Um, because that's the time where you are constantly, it's that communication back and forth uh, where, where you communicate and then you know that you're communicating well because there's feedback and they're, and they can communicate back to you what yes. you've been saying to them. But, uh, in communicating to your staff and customers, is there ever a, uh, um, a time when you can say too much in the process? 100%. And we see it all the time because everything now is in print social media, it's a transparency is a very, very powerful thing that this generation not only requires, they demand it. You have to have it. But how you deliver the message and the content is as important as what you deliver. And so there are certain things. I mean, we've got people, I just watched a, 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 a Facebook Live event you did, and, and there was a theme that was coming. People wanted to know our next step. They want to know our next step. When are we going to do this? When, when is this going to happen? And it's not time to make that decision. So a, a good leader knows they need to be transparent. A great leader knows the sequence and the amount of information they need to uh, transpose at each time. I think if you go too much detail, you move from being an encouraging voice that's a problem solver to another clanging, worrisome, oh, woe is me, you better be careful. I think if you give too much detail, then you you curb your opportunity for flexibility. Right. Because you know the context changes. Changes always. Yeah, so you have to, you, you communicate enough to let people know, we know what's going on, we have a plan, here is our plan, but you have to leave yourself some room for flexibility and, and decisions to to yeah. change as the context changes. Yeah. We are people of faith. Uh, how do you balance uh, having faith and and wisdom in a time of uncertainty? In, in other words, I've you know I've seen so many people uh, suggest that oh all people they just need to have enough faith. If you just have enough faith yeah. in a time like this, well, talk to me about that balance and what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, faith faith never moves us to a place of foolishness. Right. Right? And so we know that our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or imagine. He says in scripture that he will protect us, he will guide us, he will he's our deliverer, he's our salvation, and we believe all of those things. That is the essence of faith. Faith enables you to move forward in the face of fear. Faith is where you draw your courage to move forward when the world around you seems to be shutting down. Uh, but the idea that we would test that somehow and that we would somehow go, well, the CDC's recommendations, why would we follow those? We're people of faith. That's just ignorance. Right. I, I don't understand right. where that comes from. Uh, these are people, all wisdom is God's wisdom. And when he put this government in place, uh, we believe God's in control of all things, that we have this opportunity to listen and to receive guidance and wisdom from people who are experts in their field. Faith doesn't give you permission to ignore wisdom and advice. It's good. You know, with all the uh, social distancing that is taking place, what are some practical ways to stay connected to your team and to your customers? Yeah, I, I think leaning into the technology that you carry around in your pocket or your purse or, or however you carry your phone, I think there are some of the most powerful moments. In fact, today, I've got a friend who pastors in uh, Washington, D.C., and knew that he was in the midst of, of purchasing a building and, and, and acquiring space right before this happened. And, you know, we've been busy. I, I literally was up at 3 a.m. this morning, and we go to bed late. But I stopped for a moment, and I texted him, and I, I just said, hey, thinking about you today, I want you to know, believing God's best for you. And when you receive a message like that, so one, doesn't take long, be a voice of encouragement, not to your friend, just to your friends, but to your team. Uh, we do call outs when we're in our, our cert team meeting. There are certain people at certain times that go above and beyond. And so we make sure that we call them out in those moments and go, you are leading so strong right now. We would not be where we are without you. And then the other form of communication is, uh, we call this here, being multilingual. You have to understand, great team members know the preferential communication 
of their other team members. Right. I'm a verbal processor. Pick up the phone and call me. Uh, we've got some who love to write small novels on email. <laughs> yes. and I'm going, it's not my preferred uh. way, but okay, <laughs> if you want me to email you. And I think showing your team the respect to communicate them in their preferred language, you know, their, their method, uh, it builds that trust. And it says, you know, I know my leaders. They know me and they know how to communicate to me. Yeah. You know, this is an unprecedented uh, global event, and there are bound to be mistakes made. Um, how how should we think about our uh, nation's leaders during this time? What's what's the balance of holding them accountable while maintaining some level of grace in the midst of of this crisis? Yeah, you know, I, I think one, I, I am I've never been a very politically based person. Politics isn't something that I I talk about a lot, but I I really feel confident in moments like this. What party you're affiliated with doesn't matter at all. Uh, we should be gathering around together and solving problems for the good of our nation. And I'm seeing some of that in the news, and I'm seeing people come together like ever before. But I'm going to tell you, we I know the weight we feel here uh, with you know almost 10,000 students that we're affecting and, 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 and all of the networks that we're part of. I can't imagine what our president is feeling and the weight of that team that is literally dealing with a pandemic and the, the economic. So I think for me, the greatest way to keep from being cynical and harsh is to one, express gratitude, be thankful for the leaders that God put in place, two, pray for them. Whether I agree with them or know them or whatnot, man, they are who God has placed in that spot to lead and guide us in this time. Let's lift them up in prayer and believing that God will give them extra strength and wisdom and guidance. The same thing I would want people in our institution doing for, for us as we're leading this moment is what I think we should model and do for our, our, our leaders in, in government. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been at it together for a, a, a long time, and yeah, we've gone through uh, ups and downs. Um, and, of course, this one is obviously the most difficult challenge that we have ever faced. Let me ask you, what are you doing personally to stay sharp, refreshed, yeah. um, clear-headed, if you will, yeah. to uh, to navigate. Well, you know, I, I think the thing for me right now is, is uh, as weird as it may sound, is exercise. When yes. I leave here every day, I don't work out in the morning because I know the energy I expend and the anxiety that comes with that. Because you know, you can't you can't navigate this without anxiety and pressure and stress. Right. So I choose to go home and literally, I may call Molly, my wife, on the way home and say, babe, I'm coming in, putting my shoes on. I'll talk to you when I'm done. And I'll go for a run. I'll get a workout in. And it's this way of resetting my mind. And it's this way of, of purging negative energy through working out. But somewhere along that journey of working out, I, 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 can know, I know it's coming. There's a moment where I can sense the presence of God again. And it's like, God, thank you for sustaining me and giving me this ability. And literally by 7, 7.30 or what time ever that may, that may be, uh, I'm ready to go again. Yeah. And it's typically that time you and I are on the phone talking That's about right. the next day. Yep. We're, we're, we're constantly in, in communication. And it's, it's, you know, you're a great colleague, but even more so you're a great friend. Appreciate the, the relationship that we have uh, thank you. Uh, in, in this journey. So, Chris, thank you so much for taking time to sit down with us today. To stay up to date with what's happening here at SEU, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at SEUniversity. Thanks for joining us on Framework Leadership.